Good morning, Digit fam, and a special good morning to our new YouTube audience. That's right, the Digit Daily is on YouTube now, so subscribe and smash that bell. I've, I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> Sorry. It is March 29th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. NASA flew a helicopter. Okay, with no context, I admit, that sounds a little like, you know, I made dinner or Javi Baez hit a home run. You know, typical run-of-the-mill stuff that happens every day. And by the way, the Cubs season started yesterday, so I'm sorry to say the baseball references will be a flow in Anyway, so what I should have said was, NASA flew a helicopter built for Mars. Now do I have your attention? Yes! So here's a fun fact. The atmosphere on Mars is about 1% as dense as Earth, and it gets cold there, minus 90 degrees Celsius. The good news is there's 38% less gravity there, so we do have one thing going for us. But still, getting a helicopter to work on Mars is challenging. You have to keep it light, so this helicopter is made from carbon fiber, aluminum, or aluminium if you're Johnny Ive, silicone, copper, foil, and foam. It weighs no more than four pounds, and yet the specially designed blades need to spin at 2400 RPM. Put that into context, on Earth, a helicopter's blades spin between 300 and 500 RPM. So it's a little increase, a minor bump if you will. But then you have to ask the next logical question, how do you test a helicopter to fly on Mars when you're on, you know, Earth? It's not like we could just turn down the gravity machine or anything. It turns out all you have to do is go to California, the Jet Propulsion Lab Space Simulator in Pasadena to be precise. First, you hook up a quote, gravity offload system, which is basically a crane. Then you clear the chamber of air, creating a vacuum and let in a little carbon dioxide. Then you push the button and pray. And let me tell you, this little bird soared like an eagle. Okay, it was two inches off the ground. But on Mars, that's all you really need. The test conductor at JPL, whose name is mispronounced Ted Cezanos, said, quote, We only required a two-inch or five-centimeter hover to obtain all the data sets needed to confirm that our Mars helicopter flies autonomously as designed in a thin Mars-like atmosphere. There was no need to go any higher. And hey, man, you're the rocket scientist. The next step is to ship this helicopter off to Mars. It'll be part of the Mars 2020 rover, which arrives on Mars in February 2021, which just goes to show NASA is good at science, bad at deadlines. As a side note, the JPL chamber has hosted a number of now prestigious space vehicles, including the Ranger Moon probes, the Voyager probes, Cassini, and every Mars rover ever flown, making this little helicopter the latest in a long and distinguished line of space vehicles. And that is surely something. But you know what else is something? Why, of course, I'm talking about the Roundup! If you're intrigued about the Apple credit card that we talked about earlier this week, that's good. If you have an Android phone, that's not so good. TechCrunch digs into just what is involved in using the physical card that Apple sends you, and there are a lot of advantages to using the card if you have an iPhone. Without an iPhone, you can't take advantage of most of the security features, but you can still physically use the card, but that's about it. But if you have an iPhone, it's kind of neat. If you have an Android phone, not so much. Have I hammered home this point enough? With the introduction of the Huawei P30 this week, it's time once again to talk about nano memory. Nano memory is Huawei's proprietary expandable memory card, which is meant to replace micro SD cards because they're smaller. But they're also twice as expensive and only useful in flagship phones made by Huawei. We're not sure how long this experiment will last, but in the meantime, that's about all you need to know. You may have heard about the tough cracking down the FCC will be doing on robocallers. Well, the FCC has fined those robocallers over $200 million since 2015. Yeah, take that, robocallers. But the FCC has only collected, what? Jesus, $6,790 of that. Why? Well, it's because the FCC doesn't have the authority to collect fines. They have to turn the non-payers over to the Justice Department, and ladies and gentlemen, this is how our government works. It kind of makes you wonder, what idiots paid the $6,790? 
And speaking of simplistic illustrations as to how things work, Facebook's handling of an Alex Jones Instagram post kind of shows you how things work over there. The post depicted an illustration of a mural called False Prophets, which is largely known as an anti-Semitic message. Up to 20 Facebook executives argued back and forth about whether or not the image should be taken down from Instagram, which eventually it was. But in the meantime, the same image showed up on several other sites across the platform, including on the artist's own Instagram feed. Those were not taken down. Just do better, Facebook. And speaking of doing better, San Francisco, you are not putting your best foot forward right now. When a homeless shelter that would add about 200 beds to an affluent area of San Francisco was proposed, a GoFundMe page was created. Oh, that's nice. To help stop the building of a shelter. Wait, what? Yes. Wealthy San Franciscans raised over $46,000 to pay a real estate attorney to fight the establishment of the shelter. Rich people are afraid of poor people, so of course it makes sense that if they live on the streets, it'd be so much better for everyone. A rival GoFundMe page has been established to help build the shelter, to which GoFundMe itself donated $5,000. Though rich people are doubling up the good people by $62,000 to $37,000 as of the time of this airing. I actually kind of hope that the rich jerks finish their GoFundMe page goal, hand all the money over to the lawyer, and then lose the case. That's kind of the best case scenario for me, but in the meantime, if you want to go to the GoFundMe page, you can see the names of all the rich a-holes that decided to contribute to this cause. Giz asks is quickly becoming my favorite Gizmodo column, and this week, Giz is asking, what is the least useful body part? Doctors give a whole range of answers from the appendix to the gallbladder, but my vote goes to the doctor who points out that people still have tailbones, and why do people still have tailbones? But even further than that, there is a muscle that helps control the tails that we don't have, well, at least not externally. So I'm saying get rid of that muscle. I don't need to wag a tail that nobody can see. And finally, and kind of shame on you, Tristan, for making this a Friday fun segment and not a main story, NASA helicopter be damned, GOG is offering a bundle of Warcraft and Warcraft 2 Battle.net edition that have been optimized for Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10, and Microsoft doesn't even support Windows 7 anymore. Holy crap balls, I'm excited about this. I can't wait to hear all the dabbers and the zugzugs emanating from my Bluetooth speakers this weekend because this is getting but in fact what am i still talking to you people for i'm just kidding i love you people but that is gonna do it for today's digit daily if you'd like to learn more about any of these stories check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on digit.com and once again a friendly hello to our youtube listeners and if you like what you heard subscribe smash that bell and leave a review on your favorite podcast player also be sure to tell your friends about digitdailypod.com once again i'm adam dowd dead technology on twitter and we'll talk again on monday Smash that bell.